Um, the, the other thing I want to talk to you about, so a, another piece to our content strategy is marketing automation, yep. um, specifically as it relates, because you mentioned that, but specifically as it relates to email. Now, we talk to a lot of customers and they say, we do email all the time. You know, we say, what, pl what platform are you using? And they'll say something like, you know, MailChimp or Constant Contact or, you know, some type of, you know, relatively inexpensive software. So when we talk email, we typically talk about marketing automation email. So what's the difference between a marketing automation email and then just basically sending emails? Like how do you sort of contrast the two? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of what still comes back to marketing automation, whether you're using HubSpot, whether you're using Pardot, whether you're using any of these new players that sort of come down the pike. What I like to do is to know who my potential client is. And so it's a rush for me to get a cookie or tracking code on mm -hmm. that individual's computer and to rank them based upon their engagement. So how do you rank them based upon their engagement? Well, you can, one way is obviously what pages did they visit on my website? But a lot of what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to nurture them. And if I'm trying to nurture them, sometimes they don't feel like coming back to my website all the time. So I'm gonna have to reach them where they're at. And so what I usually like to do is I like to do marketing automation. And let me kind of share my screen one more time. Sure. Um, so with marketing automation, what I'm gonna look to do is uh, kind of, let me, let me take a couple steps back here. Anybody that usually comes into our system, we make sure that they get an overview email, features and benefits, cost of procrastination, testimonials um, and case studies, and then possibly a new offer. If they escape all that, then they're going to get onto our newsletter list. So that's a lot of touch points. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to put a, um, a score or points on that approach so that any potential client that comes to your website, if they open up these emails, we're going to give more points in the profile. And that's going to alert your sales team about people that know your brand, understand your brand and might know about your products and services. You know, specifically if you're the farther you get down the pike, as far as like testimonials and case studies, yep. um, that's, a, that's more of a buying question, but it can also take, be taken one step farther. Like, You've been in sales for 20 plus years. Yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is you're old. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But I'm sure that you have had the best sales call of your life and yes. you are already popping the, you know, popping the champagne because yeah. you know this one is in the bag. Uh-huh. And then they become a ghost. And yep. then they stop answering your emails and your phone calls. Yep. Right. Well, what we want to do in marketing automation is we want to figure out what are the indicators where a lead is starting to slip off the hook. It's what we call slippage. Um, but we're also going to train salespeople in the early on in the process, even where it feels like, you know what, life couldn't be better. You still want to try to figure out what their features and benefits they liked. And more importantly, what objections that they sure. might have had that they've expressed. Even if you answered that objection on the phone call, you still want to write it down because if they become a ghost, I want to drip market to them from a slippage campaign about the objections they had. So let's say hypothetically, they're like somewhere along the line, they said, you know what, this is awesome, but I just don't think now's the, now's the right time. Well, for me, I'm going to send you cost of procrastination um, messages. If they say Faratech, love it, just too expensive. I'm going to talk about value over price. And so what happens here is you can develop a series of emails that have every possible objection. And then you're going to break it down in several different emails. That's going to be dripped out over a certain amount of time. Right. And that, and that, that, that time periods, up. that time period's a function of your sales cycle. That's right. So if you have, if you have like a 30 day or 60 day sales cycle, you yep. know, you're going to have those, those emails a little more intermittent, but if you have a year site, sales cycle, you might do them every month. You know, there you go. If that works out. Mm -hmm.